Hello, my name is Radek, and I will talk about imaging fluorescence correlation spectroscopy and cross correlation spectroscopy in Fiji. I work at Nanyang Technological University. Jagadish works at Genome Institute of Singapore, but we all got involved in this topic while working with Torsten Wolland at National University of Singapore. I call this talk from noise to knowledge because we start with very noisy images or very noisy videos, and we want to derive information about the processes which cause this noise. Of course, every image will contain some noise from the instrument itself, such as camera readout noise, but that doesn't tell us anything about the sample. So we are interested here in the noise caused by movement of fluorescent molecules. If you look at this molecule as it moves, it contributes to the signal in different pixels. So it causes fluctuations of fluorescence intensity in the respective pixels. And that can provide information about mobility of molecules, or I should say about fluorescent particles, because it can be clusters of molecules, it can be something bigger like virus particle or lipid vesicles, about their concentration, as well as about molecular interaction. So when we uh, look at these fluctuating fluorescent signals in each pixel, so uh, they come from a small volume within the sample, which is defined in the lateral direction by the projected camera pixel convolved with the microscope point spread function. And in the axial direction, it can be defined by the penetration depth of total internal reflection. Uh, if we are using turf microscope, which is the typical choice when we are working with cell membranes or with lipid bilayers, or it can be the thickness of light sheet of a light sheet microscope, which will be applicable for any other type of sample. So we are looking now, let's look at a single voxel. And as the fluorescent particle passes through the voxel, it results in a burst of fluorescence intensity. And we want to look at the duration of the burst, because that's a measure of how fast the particle moves. So let's look at the fluctuating fluorescence intensity trace and take its replica. Uh, and we are now shifting the replica in time and looking at this product. So as uh, while the time lag is small, then uh, the bursts are still overlapping, resulting in high product, high correlation. And if the shift becomes longer than much longer than the typical duration of the birth, then the correlation is lost and it converges to the asymptotic value, which would be for this product would be the square of the average fluorescence intensities. So if we look at a larger particle, which is slower, then the bursts will be longer and the correlation function is broader. If there are more particles in the voxel, then the average signal is proportional to the fluorescence from the average number of particles, while the bursts are proportional to the fluorescence of a single particle. That means that the amplitude of the correlation function is inversely proportional to the average number of fluorescent particles. Uh, so when we do imaging FCS, we do uh, this in parallel in, for many pixels for a whole image. If we look at the fluorescence intensity time trace from a single pixel, it's very noisy. We can't clearly see the birth but we can still get a very nice correlation function for each pixel. So we do the correlations for all pixels. We fit them with a theoretical model. And from that, we derive the parameters of interest, such as diffusion coefficient and its distribution. And this is all done in our imaging FCS. 
plugin, which Torsten started developing nearly 10 years ago, and you can install it through Imaging FCS uh, update site in Fiji. This is an application of imaging FCS. So we are looking at cell membrane stained by a lipophilic dye. So we are looking at diffusion of lipids and how it is affected by polypeptide. And this is a time lapse over the course of an hour. We can do this in two colors. So if we have fluorescent particles labeled by different fluorophores, we can see the bursts in two different channels. And if the particles move independently, there is no correlation between the bursts in the two channels. So the cross correlation is flat, while if they are moving, uh, if each particle contains both fluorophores, so it contributes to both channels, then there is correlation amplitude and the ratio of the cross correlation amplitude to the autocorrelations amplitude tell us uh, how what is the ratio of the particles which contain both fluorophores this is how we do it in imaging uh, fccs format so we take the images with a, using an image splitter so they are captured by a single camera and then the corresponding the pixels in the two channels will give us two autocorrelation functions and a cross correlation functions function and then we get uh, diffusion correlation maps particle number maps and from the particle number maps we can get cross correlation amount map which is a measure how much are the signals cross correlated in that pixel this is an example uh, imaging fccs uh, of EGFR, so we are looking at dimerization of EGFR. We take first a negative control to independently moving molecules, positive control, a single molecule labeled by both fluorescent proteins, and the actual experiment where there are EGFR molecules labeled by green and EGFR molecules labeled by red protein. And we see quite a high level of cross correlation showing us that there are clearly some dimers or even higher oligomers. The FCS imaging FCS plugin keeps developing. So the latest version supports GPU acceleration as well as direct camera readout. This is very useful for optimizing the experiment because you can see the correlation functions directly while acquiring uh, the images and not only after the acquisition has finished. And the latest uh, work uh, in progress shows that the fluctuating intensity traces can be also uh, characterized by deep learning and the parameters about diffusion derived in this way, not doing the usual correlation analysis, but that's uh, still in progress. And the, all this work was done uh, in the lab of Torsten Woland. This is a picture from 2016 when I was there, Jagadish was there, Daniel was not yet there. And thank you for your attention.